We've got Dendrobium Pocket Lara coming into bloom. We've also got Wilhelm Mara Shilob Marie Elle coming into bloom with three spikes. For now, possibly four. This name always reminds me of Wilma from the Flintstones. Anyway, moving on. We've also got a first time bloomer coming into bloom soon. My OG Ancelia Africana. <laughs> Finally! Finally, after five years, from pathetic little canes to a single spike, but at least we're going to see what she looks like. And we've got Papillonantha Teres variety under Sonii coming into bloom with three spikes. I'm going to be doing a separate video on this orchid because, oh my goodness, three spikes in the lofty heights of the entire plant. Things are looking fabulous for this orchid as well. But that was just a little tease. Thank you so much for being on the patio. Thank you so much for joining me for the main show. Look at what we have in store. All the blooms on the patio that I want to share with you. Before they fade, as temperatures rise, the conditions are getting drier, the wind is picking up, and my blooms look frazzled very, very quickly, which also then results in the fact that the bloom duration isn't as long as they normally would be. I am so glad you're here. Welcome to Southern Spain. Let's look at some blooms. And if you don't mind to give this video already a thumbs up, that would be amazing. Subscribe to the channel. That would be double amazing. And should you want to share some beautiful orchid blooms with friends, family on other social media, then that would be trifecta amazing. But let me focus on you and I hope that you enjoy this video. We're going to start out with an orchid that has been in bloom for the past two months, Epicatandra rene Marquez, crossed with Dimarandra emarginata. The blooms are starting to fade a little bit, but still, I thought I would include her because she is my very, very early spring pop of color, and I'm ever so grateful for this orchid. But another orchid that has also bloomed for a very long time, <laughs> starting to go over, but you know, I am not going to exclude Lelia Mantecheri, which is our first time bloomer for 2020 with this beautiful pop of orange. Seems like she's been in bloom forever as well. And very, very welcome. And the orchid is strong enough that I can just let her do her thing and get the bloom duration dialed in and then share that with others who may be interested how long the blooms of the Manticari last. Not as long lasting a bloomer, but because her second spike, which is the first to have two leads bloom at once from the Catliantha White Bridal Snow White, allows me to enjoy the beautiful fresh gardenia fragrance in the blooming alley a little bit longer. Oh, speaking of blooming alley, <laughs> yes, these are all in my blooming alley with some that I haven't managed to move out, but I had to move all of these out because I can't take the camera into the blooming alley without risking knocking off blooms and some spikes <laughs> that are still in bud much needed anyway that is why we are on the staging area but we'll have a look see in the blooming alley a little bit further along in the video fresh blooms on a dendrobium my dendrobium row is now starting to just take over the blooming alley but this is my dendrobium polyanthem so let's just focus on her because gorgeous the only thing here i'm wondering why some canes haven't bloomed on the nodes where they should be blooming that is very strange to me i only have like two blooms blooms on a single cane, whereas other canes have other nodes that have bloomed out as well. Anyway, Hakuna Matata, we have a beautiful show and a wonderful fragrance of sugary licorice. And she is now super duper busy. I've got so many new growths starting. I really want this orchid to grow a lot of roots this season so that she can start to figure out that she's already on a cork mount and get a little bit away from what is left of the inorganic mount she was originally mounted on. And moving on to the next little table that is also chock a block full of beauties, I have my purpuratas all in bloom. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So let's have a look at those. This is Lelia purpurata variety striata. Four blooms. That is a first for me and her. <laughs> she was the first of all the purpuratas to open up, which is also a first because in the past years, she was the last to open up. I am super, super pleased with the progress of my purpuratas having been outside in the winter for the first time during the winter of 23 and 24. So they have had consistent light on sunny days and it shows it has paid off because 
My Lelia purpurata variety back hoiseri striata. Mm, mm, mm. Three blooms. Now, I am accustomed to having had her bloom three blooms before, but that is when she had supplemental lighting, and since then she only ever bloomed two blooms for me until, hello, she stayed out during the winter, had all the light that she could get, and here we are back with three blooms. Now, the striata and the back hoiseri striata both have a rose fragrance, whereas this one, the back hoiseri striata, is already leaning towards the same fragrance that my, oh, one of my favorites when it comes to fragrance in the blooming alley is my Lelia Purpurata variety back hoiserie, not the striata. You can see this one has clean white petals and sepals, whereas the striata has a slight little flare. And this one now goes directly into lemon, sherbet, sugar pudding kind of creamy fragrance and three blooms. This is what she bloomed for me for the first time when she ever bloomed back in the day. And we're back on track with three blooms. Again, I emphasize I am so happy they made it through the winter. It was an experiment and I was watching very closely and I would have brought them inside if I saw signs of stress. But if I can get away with this winter upon winter upon winter, that means three less pots that I have to carry in and out every day on a sunny day. This is wonderful, wonderful. I hope you are enjoying the colors and the beautiful shapes that Lelia Purpuratas have. I just love the symmetry of these blooms so much. And back in bloom, let's celebrate, drum roll. Lelia Pacavia, look at this. I have missed this orchid for a year. I was very concerned that she was not gonna bloom for us during the conditions, circumstances that I'm dealing with. And I thought, just live, you know? The old adage, just live. I'm working towards better times for all the orchids, but for the moment, I just need you to live. But she is blooming her first two blooms because there is another piece of this orchid in the same pot, which this year, if all goes well, will be a first time blooming piece. Oh my goodness. So you can clearly see the purpurata parent in her. Oh, I'm so happy and so relieved to have her back in bloom. And no, she did not stay outside during the winter because I was very hesitant that she was starting to get stressed because of the cold temperatures. So I wasn't gonna push her and still she bloomed. Super pleased. This is her second blooming on this piece that is within this pot. Divine, divine fragrance of roses. And the color is mm, much deeper in real life than what you see on camera. And that is why I put the Guarachea Black Comet next to her, because these two colors complement each other so beautifully. But I recently did a specific video for the Guarachea Black Comet, which I will link in the description if you would like to see her close up in greater detail. One thing I did want to mention about this one, though, we have a fourth spike coming. <laughs> In the video, we only had three spikes and a new growth. And well, the new growth is gonna spike for us as well. It's fantastic. This orchid is going to be in bloom a very long time. And another little update is the fact that she has a fragrance. In the video, you will hear me say, I guess I have a fragrance dud, but no, she has produced a fragrance, which I'm not too, let's say, a fan of. It's like aromatic cat litter. Mm, not really my thing. But anyway, I don't have to put my nose in it and she doesn't overwhelm the blooming alley. Right now, the purpuratus and my Catliantha White Bridal, they are really stealing the show when it comes to fragrances. And there's a video going to be coming about my Brassavola orchids, but I wanted to show you my Brassavola flagellaris. Yes, a flagellaris she is, but we'll focus on that in a separate video, which when that airs, I will also link in the description so that you understand where I'm coming from when I say that, should you be new to my channel. But anyway, once all the fragrances from all the other orchids during the day have subdued, this one lights up the blooming alley with a wonderful lemon citrus fragrance with a little hint of vanilla and a touch of cream. It's delicious. And these blooms have also lasted quite some time. I've been and enjoying them for the past five weeks. I know, right? Five weeks for such delicate blooms to do their thing and look so, so pristine. It's like tissue paper and they've lasted five weeks so far. Amazing, I love it. 
And also, it's starting on its next new growth, which is <laughs> already up there. <laughs> but there's another one with a very long spike that I had to move away from the staging area so that I could show you my Lelia Briagheri because, well, the sun was already coming up over the hedge and it was cancelling out the yellow. I couldn't get the actual color into the viewfinder for you. It just washed everything white. Anyway, look at these cute and darling yellow blooms and for the first time she is blooming two spikes for us and she arrived bare root in a pathetic state very weak no roots at all and we were babying her for around eight months in a greek yogurt container and well ta-da here she is she has bloomed for us before but never with two spikes and i think this is just <laughs> And here is my Maxillaria tenuifolia that last year was a little bit disappointing when it came to blooms, but this year we got 10 blooms out of it. And now it is propped up on that staging area because who doesn't like the smell of coconuts? Oh, sorry, I love coconut fragrances and I know many people do not like anything to do with coconut, so sorry, I got ahead of myself there, but I happen to really enjoy it. And this is a very strong fragrance just from these 10 blooms, very pleased to see that I have more blooms than I had last year. I'm putting the brakes on before we go to the west side because I've got something going on there that I want to show you as well. But before we do that, Jomelia Aborescence has opened its first bloom and there are so, so many more to come. So we will have a closer look at this orchid when more blooms appear. However, I have to document every bloom because these blooms don't last very long. So just a little time out here showing you the first bloom because that might be gone when the next ones open which could be the case with my two spikes on Vandaka Stylus Lucneri. So the main fan, the more mature fan, has only given me one spike. I was hoping for two, but the orchid doesn't disappoint because she has two more fans in the basket. And one of the two newer fans that she grew is also in spike. It hasn't bloomed out yet. So I was kind of hoping to show you a nice little basket full of beautiful, fragrant, again, Neo Phoenicia Falcata style fragrance of lemon, sugar, gorgeous, yum, fragrant day and night. Anyway, I wanted to show you a basket with two spikes in bloom, but we only have this one and I'm not entirely sure if the other one will bloom out while this one is still intact. Anyway, there we go. At least I can show you my loose sneery and how gorgeous this spike looks on the main fan. We're going to stick with the color theme if you're into purples and lavenders and well, deep purples. <laughs> my Vanda Chow Praia, also lofty heights now, has three fans. The main fan in the middle cracked in two places, which were treated. Thankfully, nothing rotted out on this orchid. But because of the cracks, two more fans appeared laterally. And last year, in 2023, the right one became a first-time bloomer. And this year, we're going to have three spikes on the one on the right. That is insane. The one in the center is blooming with one spike, but this year we are also going to have a first time bloomer on the left fan. So this is gonna be sensational because these blooms last a very long time and I shall have the fantastic sugary blueberry fragrance on the west side for many, many weeks. Gorgeous. And yes, I'm letting everything go all viney up there. I am allowing that vine to do its thing for now, I'm just observing it, but for now, for the summer season, it's going to help me with humidity. And because it gets extremely windy on the patio, especially in that little corner there, I don't want them to snap again. So I'm thinking that maybe the vines will also become my twine. <laughs> A support system of sorts. <laughs> And then when everything is put back in its place, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a visual of my blooming alley, how I have my orchids organized. I wish I could have all the perforatas with the pacavia lined up, but they are too tall, so I have to place them on the lower shelf with the Guardia chair together because she has quite tall spikes as well and they interfere. So everything on the left side smells of roses and lemon sherbet and gardenia. It's delicious. It's all good in the blooming alley. And then at the far end, I still have my Dendrobium nobili in bloom. And from there, you can see off to the right, I've got the Briagheri positioned a little bit lower. And that is where spikes are forming on my Lelia crispa 
Lisa, and it be a first time bloomer. That's why I'm so cautious in that corner and I'm not bringing cameras or tripods in there. But also still in bloom is my Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Epidendrum Capricornu. These will be going over soon as well, but the orchid is strong. I don't have to cut this spike off prematurely. So you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about my blooming alley, because I'm literally walking into a cul-de-sac with blooms to the left of me, to the front and to the right. Above me is this beautiful spectacle, which I did a dedicated video for as well. I will link that one in the description for the Dendrobium Victoria Regina, because this insanity of beauty that you see there, well, if you want to see more of it in more detail, better angle, better lighting, please check out that video. I hope I'm not wasting your time by sending you to it. Every single day as well, I've been cutting off Dendrobium Unicum blooms just to reduce the stress on this case because the new growth is already underway. But I just couldn't bring myself to remove 15 blooms all in one go because that was the blooming we had this year for the first time that extensive, that abundant with my unicum. So every day one bloom went just so that I could, you know, not make it too harsh on myself. But it's better for the orchid. We're heading into some extremely stressful weather conditions and I really want this one to do well also for us next year. I still have a teeny hint of tangerine body mist fragrance and that is also extremely welcome. Anywho, Coming soon, as you see, I'm stepping back from orchid to orchid to orchid, and that's why I call the top right shelf my dendrobium robe, because my polyanthem would also be behind the Victoria Regina if she hadn't been taken to the hedge so that you could see her properly. So dendrobium robe, apart from the fact the unicum will be gone, is going to be blessed with bensonia, and the bensonia will smell of vanilla sugar. We got that to enjoy, and another little spotlight video coming from her. And I can only step back so far to get this shot <laughs> because I'm hitting the gate with my back where the aphylum lives. But at least this gives you an overview of why I call this space my blooming alley. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I appreciate that you stayed and watched it to the end. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.